Hey everyone, it's Nicholas Wilton at Art to Life. Um, about a week ago, last Sunday actually, the mo- the amazing landscape painter uh, Russell Chatham passed. I met Russell uh, in West Marin um, a few years ago and was fortunate enough to um, have a conversation with him. Uh, Russell painted the California landscape, uh, moved to Montana and painted there and moved back here the last about 10 years ago and continued painting. His life story is amazing. The wisdom, the artistry, the dedication, um, it's too hard to describe him and his work. Um, it moved me. I, I learned so much from this man and was so inspired by his work. So I thought maybe what I could do is just share a few outcuts from our conversation and and let you experience Russell as well. By the time I got to be, say, 18, um, and, and my father, <laughs> who was, you know, uh, just he, you know, he would say, you know, what, what are you, you know, what are you gonna, what, do? What are you gonna yeah. do? You can't just keep fooling around, fishing and painting. And he said, this is, this is, you know, and so, but I didn't know what I, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I, I, not, not a clue. So, and I never thought about, you know, painting as a, as a profession or a business, unquote. And, but, you know, then I, I, I did, t- I took a couple of classes at the College of Marin, which of course is ludicrous in hindsight because I was the worst student. <laughs> you know, I flunked out of high school. So what am I doing at the College of Marin? So naturally I flunked out of there too the first year. Oh but I met a woman who was teaching Asian art history and, uh, and printmaking and uh, drawing. And her name was Doris Meyer. And she was a very, very intelligent woman. And we started hanging out together, and I eventually married her. And I, she was like 20 years older than I was. Wow. Well, she, she said to me, why are you, why are you wondering what it is you're going to do? She you're says, already doing you're it. You're already doing it for, since you were seven years old. <laughs> um, everything was about your behavior and your, you know, being honest and being uh, um, ethical and all these kinds of considerations was really all that mattered. It was not about what you were going to sell something for. And I, you know, so I tried like all through my 20s, I would have like to try to have a little painting exhibition every year. But, you know, it was, you know, maybe sold one little painting a year for 25 bucks or something wow. like that. Wow. And I, you know, I thought, well, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, I mean, but I mean, you know, it's all relative. I mean, sure, sure. And so I just figured, well, so I got to work these, crummy, you know, part-time jobs, you know, in the back shop of newspapers or whatever I can, you know, had all kinds of goofy mm-hmm. job, you know, hard mm-hmm. manual mm-hmm. labor jobs and all that kind of stuff. But I, by the time I was 30, it was starting to dawn on me that I'm working my ass off and I, when am I supposed to paint? When am I supposed to learn how to paint? Mm-hmm. But anyway, so the thing came up about Montana and I went up there and, um, to Livingston. To, yeah, to Livingston. yeah, yeah. My friend Tom McGuane had gone there, and a couple of other friends. And I, so he says, come up and visit. So went up there to go fishing and hunting and stuff. And I realized there was this beautiful ranch. You know, next to him was a, a six or six hundred, six seven hundred acre ranch, it was sitting empty, and the guy wanted to rent it. And I went to him and. And he wanted five hundred dollars a year, and I said, "That's where we're going. <laughs> That's in our budget." So you get this big studio, and then you start to have the time again. Well, it, so the, in other words, so that because what I did was I told myself right then, and I was thirty-one years old when we went up there. I said, "I don't care." I told my wife Mary, um, uh, my second wife, actually, you know you know, we're still going to be poor, don't we? you know, but at least we'll be in Montana. I have a shotgun, a rifle, fishing rods, and we have a garden, and we can't starve, and we won't be evicted because I can make the $500 a year, wow. you know, and 
So I just, so that was, that was the end of the bad job syndrome. And, you know, then in 1974, I sold a book to Doubleday Publishers in New York, which is a, which is a book that's turned out to be a really cult book. It's called The Angler's Coast. And, I, and the editor-in-chief liked the book and wanted me to come to New York. And I said, go to New York? I've never, I can't go to New York. I just don't have any money. I've never been on a plane. I don't know what, you know. Oh my God. And, but I went, you know, because they paid me $3,000 for the advance for this book. You know how much money that was to, like, wow. in 1974 to somebody like me? I said, I told Mary, I said, we're rich for life. All I really had to go on was, which was, thank God, because my grandfather's a great painter, I had to go on his work and whatever else that was in the orbit around California. I mean, you were self-taught. That's just so extraordinary. Well, you know, I, yeah. I mean, you looked at these things, but I mean, you didn't, you didn't ever went to art school. You never had. I had a, my grandfather to lean on. Yeah, and and that's why uh, that's why I didn't give up because I knew it's what I was supposed to do and that's what yeah. I wanted to do. Uh -huh. So I didn't care the rest of it, the career, the money, all that. That that didn't exist for me at all. Huh. You know, I so said that's not what it's about. I got my paint box, and I've got this vision that I need to get this. I need to learn how to do this and get it right and get good at it. And but going to New York. I mean, now you got the, the Metropolitan, you got the Frick, you know, and I thought then I was smart enough to get on the shuttle and go up to Boston. And look. I walked in there and I saw that first premiere. Ah, fuck. Yeah. That was really something. But I knew, I knew that I wasn't Goya and I wasn't Rembrandt and I wasn't, I wasn't uh, Vermeer. Vermeer, you know, but... On the other hand, I did see in the main room at the Frick this huge Corot, and I thought, I could go there maybe, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that, that might be doable. I was still painting outside. I hadn't really made the transition yet from sketching. I'd take my car out, my 47 Plymouth, sit on the running board with my box, uh -huh. and go outside and paint. And that's all I really did. And I hadn't made the transition yet into studio. I didn't know what studio painting was. Yeah, and that's I'd what take that and come back in here and hold it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I that's I think that was the germ of what I got when I saw those huge paintings in New York, and I realized these are painted. These are imagination. These yeah, are these right. are painting from imagination, you know. And I thought, how do you, how did they do it? I don't know how they did it, you know. And and it was a, a very tricky transition to because when you're outside painting, what's happening is. Um, you're sketching, you're pulling information in. It's very specific information that's in front of you, and you're pulling it in, and putting it on in some form on the on the canvas. And if you're and, and when you're in the studio where you're not looking at at something in front of you, you have to pull it out of your head. Right. Well, what happens? It gets distorted when it comes out of your head, mm -hmm. and what, that's what you want because then then you're pulling out only the essential information. You're getting rid of the meaningless details, you know, right, right. and the and the sub total subservience to copying something that's in front of you, and it was that 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 was a very important transition. That and that took years and years and years. So these people started coming to Montana to make movies. Oh right, you know, Jack Nicholson comes to town. Right, exactly. Ah, and suddenly I get it. These people were coming to town who had some money and that were that had that were also art collectors. And they'd see a little painting at Tom's house. They said, "Well, geez, that's pretty good. Where'd you get that?" And they'd say, "Well, this guy up the road, you know, paints <laughs> these." And they go, well, "I'd like to get one of those. Where do I find this guy?" And they drive up the road, and there I am in the old pigsty, the, the pig barn, <laughs> with the, the dirt floor, you know, selling they, paintings to Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> wow. But, so. I mean, it's serendipitous. I mean, because like these collectors came to you, right? In a way, the, the I mean, you put yourself out in the boonies, but it just so happened that was a place that that was your place, ideal clients. I needed start to showing up. I, How do you evaluate for yourself when a, when a picture is really resonating for for you? When, I mean, they're how can I put it? I mean, they're definitely not all equal. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes something will develop. That and the way I kind of describe it is, <clears throat> is if something comes out of your subconscious, as it were, 
um, and 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 works. That's I I, I call that a gift. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and and it doesn't happen all the time. You know, usually it's usually. Right, frankly, it's just a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. you just have to show up right, and keep right. keep at it, and keep adding and subtracting and correcting. And it, you know, I, the way I look at it is, you know, working on a, a painting or a lithograph for that matter, you're you're basically making corrections all the time. And it was a subject of that I saw about a year ago, sitting on a patio in Bolinas, looking at Bolinas Ridge, mm -hmm. and we're having a, a like a little luncheon thing, and I was sitting with where I was facing the lagoon and the fog was coming in like it does there off of the channel and going across the, you know, and it was wafting across. It wasn't covering it. It was, you could see through it. Yeah. And I thought, wow, you know, that that's, is. you know, so I thought, so anyway, this, this person who was a patron down there, you know, was wanted a painting. And I said, I said, okay, I'm going to, which is, did they possibly do something that has a Bolinas theme? And I said, and I didn't, I wasn't going to do it. And then I thought, yeah, you know, I'll try. Yeah, I will. I said, I'll try that. I said, I said, but I have to tell you, I don't think it's going to work. I said, I think I don't really know how to do it. It's going to be too hard. So I started it and started working on it. And, you know, and it, it, it was hard, but then I hit a point where something happened. And I don't, I, I don't know what it was. It, it was like, I, I blocked this thing in, and I suddenly, it was almost like, like it shouldn't work in the, the early stages of blocking in. It should be all mistakes. And it kept like locking in and locking in, and like, I'm going, this can't be. I this, this is, is just working. It's just like it is working, and I kept coming in here, and I kept sitting here looking at it. I'm going, I was dead. I got to be afraid to touch it, and I thought. What if, what if, you know, well, I said, you know, come on, Russ, you can't screw it up because you've, you're using your own system here. So what are you afraid of? Just go at it. You know, so I started my own this thing and it kept getting like, it was getting weirded out. It was getting better and better. And finally, I'm just going, I just can't believe this is unbelievable. And I kept fiddling with the light and, and this girl that next door here, um, Gail, that has the produce is a friend of mine. And I was over there and she said, what are you working on? I said, you got to come and see this. I, I just kept going and I finally, when I finished it, I just sat there. I just, I just couldn't believe my eyes. I, said, I cannot believe this. Wow. This is wow. absolutely, you know, I, you know, I started laughing actually. I said, it's just, it's just like, just as, this just like was a landslide from, from God or something yeah, yeah. that landed on this canvas. and. It, it, somehow it passed briefly through me. But it, right, right. But it, wow. <laughs> it, what a payout. What an amazing... Well, they see, but that doesn't happen. I mean, that's like doesn't happen very sure. often. I mean, usually it's more blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just mm -hmm. tough fight it out and, you know, duke it out to the, get do the best you can and, and try not to have to throw it away. <laughs> what your work is, I mean, you're... You're moved by something. You stand there in a landscape, and and there's something sparks, and then you distill that down, and that's what you've just been doing your whole career. And that's this is your purely just your expression, and that's the authenticity, and that's what people that's, want. That's all it and is. They just crave it. But it's that's like, that's all yeah. it is, and I think I think that people see. I think people recognize that. I do too. When I was 12 or 13 or 14 years old, I knew that I was going to paint the way I was painting for my whole life. No kidding. Yeah, I mean, I knew that. Wow. And I, I know, but I didn't know it as a, as a job or as a profession or, as a, or anything like that. I just knew this is what I'm, this is what I real, this is the thing that I really like to do. And, yeah. you know, and I think my grandfather wants me to do this, you know. <laughs> and so I'm going to do it. Yeah, okay. Thank you.